Good morning. I'm Steve Thompson from the Welcome EPSRC Centre for Interventional and Surgical Sciences. Here today to talk about psychic surgery, which is modular libraries for surgical navigation. Start off with explaining the aims of psychic surgery, the sorts of things you wanted them to do. Um, so we wanted high quality, useful libraries uh, to support our research in image guided interventions. To do that, we need to implement a certain number of core functions um, to support our research. And there are for, for image guided surgery or augmented reality in surgery, there are six domain areas that researchers need to be able to use pre-made software to, to get moving quickly with their with their research aims. And these are imaging, so basic uh, taking CT scans, um, etc. Segmenting and processing those images um, into something useful in these medical image computing. We don't do a lot of that in psychic surgery. We're focused on the last four domain areas, um, the bits we actually use live during surgery. So these are hardware interfaces, uh, talking to ultrasound scanners, talking to tracking systems, uh, and then registration to get the intraoperative images aligned nicely with the preoperative um, processed segmented images. Then importantly, visualization, um, where we can get the visualization optimized for the application and user interface design. The last two bit we, we use uh, VTK and QT a lot. All of these domains are covered by other packages like Slicer, MITK. Um, we'll talk uniquely about how our approach differs to some of these and why we chose our approach. Um, so the other bit that's important for psychic surgery is we wanted something that could be used, taken almost as is and used in production applications. So right from the start we've followed software engineering best practice in terms of documentation and testing, etc. quality control. So in theory we can take a psychic surgery library and plug it into an application. The second big aim of psychic surgery, where we've fallen down in the past to some extent on our previous projects, is sustainability and maintainability. We want to make sure our libraries can be maintained, that bug fixes, new features, update dependencies by their users so that we don't require a funded team of software engineers. Um, so we're going to get PhDs and postdocs to continue to contribute uh, to the libraries going forward and that makes sustainable software. So the design choices we took when we started with with scikit surgery are informed by these aims. We chose to use the Python language previously. We've, we use C++, which is more powerful perhaps, but we find our contributors, our, our desired contributors, researchers, struggle to contribute to C++ libraries. And the other thing is we want things that are very modular. Um, so our, our libraries, our modules, do a single task. So they might talk to a tracking system. They might do visualization but it means we can plug and play different modules uh, so a researcher can focus on that they can use existing small modules to build a system and they can focus on building their own little small module that covers their research and that all depends very heavily on the infrastructure for managing modular code you can have modular code but you need to be able to manage it well. And Python does that well with the Python package installer, which is another reason why we chose Python. So this is an example of some of the research we've done in the past. This is the smart liver system. It's augmented reality for liver surgery. There's an awful lot of research that's gone into this very short video, and an awful lot of, uh, of software development. So we had to make decisions when we developed this software and the, the video you saw is based on the Nifty K platform which is C++, it's, it's open source, it's tested, it's a, it's a nice platform 
The, the smart loader application itself is quite small. Um, so three and a half thousand lines of code. And it contains the sort of intellectual property stuff we want. If we were to create a medical product with this and we were trying to spin out, that's where the, the unique stuff is. But we don't want to spend all our time as researchers and developers contributing to that. We want to contribute to something that can be more widely reused uh, and recycled. So all the sort of common uh, infrastructure stuff goes into the NIFDK platform, which is open source it's on GitHub um, and can be used by other researchers in future programs. So all our code is modular. Um, NIFDK is modular. MITK, which is based on is modular. Um, so this is an attempt to sort of display that modularity in an intuitive way. Uh, this is how Smart Liver, the, all these circles are sort of scaled based on the, the, the size in terms of lines of code that they occupy. So the Smart Liver bit, the, the unique IP bit, is up here on the top. And it depends on all of these modules. The, the blue modules are part of Nifty K. The issue is, obviously, you have to be able to control what modules are built and compiled, which can be quite tricky. But fortunately, we have uh, CMake, which is a, a great bit of code for managing modular C++ code. So we can, we can download all the source code from GitHub, and we can compile the bits we want using CMake. Unfortunately, CMake, for, for all its power, is also very intimidating. And generally, researchers just find it too hard to use. So they end up using pre-compiled uh, executables rather than downloading and contributing to the source and that's what we found um, so nifty k is still out there it's still good software but we haven't got the contributor the active contributor base to keep it sustainable um, with with smile of based on on psychic surgery we have a fairly similar broadly similar looking dependency diagram uh, it, some reasons it looks simpler because there's less actually implemented in it. But we have the same problem of managing dependencies. The difference is with PIP, we can download pre-compiled binaries of, of the Python package index. So all of these dependencies can be managed quite easily. With it. So if we do a PIP install smart liver, it will automatically install surgery VTK. And it will download pre-built binaries. It will do all of this within a couple of minutes, as opposed to, to 12 hours for CMake on a, on a big project. And so what we find is that an individual researcher can, first of all, they can build their own applications. We, we've seen that. We've had people publish on this using components. But they might be able to also contribute to one of these individual modules quite easily because the modules are relatively small. Researchers can get their head around them and they're written in Python. So something like the, the Smart Liver system, obviously on, on grant funding we've put a lot of effort into the, the top library Smart Liver, but externally we've had contributions to the, the NDI tracking library which is more generally useful to other researchers in other groups. Uh, some of the other component libraries can also be used in other systems. So things you can do with psychic surgery, we have the Smart Liver application, which does augmented reality for keyhole liver surgery. And that's going through first in human trials under an ISO 13485 quality management system. The use of the modular software and the fact that we've, we've stuck to good software engineering practice means we can create a product that can be used under some sort of quality control um, and it does everything you need from a, an image guided surgery sort of package. So that's our big heavyweight sort of use case. So you can use psychic surgery to build a, build a full augmented reality system for surgery. This has interfaces with uh, tracking systems again and, and I think there's an ultrasound component 
um, and they've done some fairly clever registration stuff there. Lighter weight stuff we've done, which has been um, more fun. So we've done things for public engagement. This Snappy Sonic thing was one of the first things we did, which because we had the infrastructure, um, we were able to sort of sit around and conceive of this. And in a couple of weeks, we had a working application. Um, just, it's, it's just an ultrasound simulator that people can play with um, and see interesting things on the street, what they do. But what was, what was impressive is that we were able to do it quickly. It's still there, it still works. Uh, it's developed about three years ago, it's still on GitHub, it still works. Um, people are still downloading it and using it. Um, and we're still using it for public engagement, which as a, as a piece of rapidly turned around software, um, it's quite good. The other thing we did um, for teaching, so this is a bit of fun we had during lockdown um, in the kitchen, looking at inattentional blindness during augmented reality. Um, so you look, you're too busy looking at the augmented reality to, to notice there's a, a fatal flaw with, with the setup um, here, the lack of legs. Um, and this obviously happens in surgery. Papers out there talking about inattentional blindness in surgery. But we were able to develop this basic augmented reality demonstration which we use for teaching our master's modules. We can do stuff like this with it. Um, it uses a root code markers, but because of the way psychic surgery is hardware interface is set up, you can plug and play an NDR tracker <coughs> and in theory have yourself a, a lightweight uh, image guidance system for surgery which you can then build on um, add your own novel technology to. So that's, that's psychic surgery, open source, cross-platform, um, we try to make sure it's tested and well documented, all easily installable, easy to find on GitHub now. Um, we deliberately chose psychic surgery because you can just search it on Google. Um, tutorials, etc., all online. So yeah, thank you to the developers and obviously thank you to our funders, um, EPSRC and welcome. Take any questions. So, um, how often do you find that people need to sort of get under the hood on something like BDK or some of the other C++ dependencies? Do you still find that happens, or is it nicely abstracted? We've never needed to get under the hood of any of our dependencies. Um, we did um, we use a small bit of the plus toolkit contributed to, to to get our stuff up and running for BTK and OpenCV. Um, we do have problems with OpenCV uh, because they, they tend to introduce subtle changes which come out data which breaks all the unit tests. Um, but we don't actually we have spent time going back to try and work out what OpenCV have done. Uh, usually by the time we work on it's been fixed. But the other things, not so much. We are we're looking at to trying to use a bit more VTKJS and change to a um, web-based interface. Okay. We do struggle with QT as a dependency quite a lot. Cool. Okay. Thank you, Steve.